As Jeffrey Jerome Cohen states in Monsters Culture 7th Thesis in Monster Theory Reading Culture, the monster is born only at this metaphoric crossroads as an embodiment of a certain cultural moment of our time, a feeling and a place. The monster for which I have chosen to do my presentation on is Frankenstein's monster from Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein, the modern day Prometheus from the early 1800s. Frankenstein's monster is defined as a thing that becomes terrifying or destructive to his maker. The monster is constructed from various corpses. His appearance is unnerving as he is wrapped taut in a thin yellowish tinted skin that is so translucent it barely covers the outside of his muscles and inner organs. He has large watery glowing eyes and long black stringy hair and black lips. In Mary Shelley's novel, the monster is abhorred due to his hideous appearance. Because the monster is so repulsive, he is not accepted by humanity that he longs to be a part of. Frankenstein's true nature is extremely sensitive and emotional like that of a child. The monster is highly intelligent and is an eloquent speaker as he becomes fluent in three languages of French, German, and English in the novel. In the following presentation, we will discuss Frankenstein's monster and the various cultural, scientific, and political tropes he embodies. We will follow the transformation of Frankenstein's monster as a metaphor up until the present time amongst various lines of categorization. We will discuss some but not all of Frankenstein's monster as a metaphor as it is adopted in so many lines of thought it would take a series of books to cover them all. But in order to do this, we first must look at the mother of Frankenstein's monster and the cultural, political, and scientific movements of his time to better understand the ethos that he embodies. The mother of Frankenstein is Mary Shelley, who was born in London Somers Town District on August 30th, 1797. Her mother and father were both progressive thinkers. Mary Shelley's mother was a feminist whose writings brought political attention to women's issues in regards to their second-class citizenship in society. Her father was a philosopher and a novelist whose moral and political ideas were reputable, sought after, and highly respected he was dedicated to the ideas of liberty, truth, and justice. Both Mary Shelley's parents were greatly influenced by the ideals of the French Revolution and were members of a small political group known as English Jacobins. Thus, one could deduct that Mary Shelley's own upbringing influenced her Gothic novel. Mary Shelley wrote the novel Frankenstein and Modern Day Prometheus when she was only 19 years of age, after a challenge from her father and her husband to write a tale of horror. She claims the idea came to her when she was sleeping. Mary Shelley's novel was written in 1818, a period influenced by the Enlightenment era that began in the 16th and 17th century. The Enlightenment era was a time in intellectual European history when Western thought had made a radical shift away from the medieval positions. The Enlightenment era was a revolutionary in different ways of thinking as there were many new discoveries in science, politics, and society. Much of the Enlightenment era's revolutionary ideas derived from the French Revolution. The monster of Frankenstein was sparked by new scientific ideas that stemmed out of the Enlightenment era. His body as a metaphor, which is a compilation of different corpses stolen from the graves, represents the new natural science and the new breakthroughs in medical science. Because of the new scientific inquiry and developments in medicine and the exploration to the meaning of nature and life itself, there is little doubt that these concepts were of the inspiration to the creation of Frankenstein. New science was a way of investigating the nature of the universe in its physical form. It was based on man's ability to observe, document, and reason the structure of the universe. New science was based on analysis, deduction, and synthesis. Science had trumped magic and pseudoscience that had dominated man's belief system for the past 2,000 years. Experimentation was the method of the new science. A hypothesis would have to be under rigorous experiments, then an inference could be drawn. Authority was no longer granted to reasoning. Anything that was not practiced under rigorous methods of new science was considered a speculation. At the time of the novel, there were many developments in science that re suggested reanimating the dead. In the novel, Frankenstein is interested in galvanism, the belief that the dead can be brought back from, by ways of electricity. 
In Mary Shelley's novel, the monster is brought to life by ways of galvanism, one of the many scientific inquiries of the time. Thus, Frankenstein's monster could be thought of as a scientific metaphor, embodying the new scientific explorations in the 19th century, and asks what it means for man to take liberties of playing God over nature. Monster as the Criminal In Mary Shelley's novel, the monster is on the run for murdering various people. He is a criminal, and if one were to look at the new laws taking place in the 18th century in France, one would be able to relate this position to the monster. Frankenstein's monster is representational of the human criminal. The metaphor could be related in Foucault's lecture on the nature of being a criminal and the change in criminal justice. As Foucault states in chapter 4 of his book Abnormal, at the level of rules governing species and distinction between natural species, the monstrous individual was always associated, if not systematically, at least virtually, with a possible criminality. Then starting in the 19th century, the re relationship is reversed, and the monstrosity is systematically suspected of be being behind all criminality. Every criminal will be a monster, just as previously it was possible that the monster was a criminal. This transformation of the laws of criminality could be seen as a metaphor of justice in Mary Shelley's novel. The Frankenstein monster was used as a political metaphor for social unrest. His image was appropriated and utilized as a sign of the revolting mobs opposed to the bourgeois society. The monster's image was common in the 1800s, a time of many revolutionary scares, unrest, and demand for reformation of politics. Throughout the 19th century, Frankenstein's monster was used as a metaphor to express and encourage political dissatisfaction. Now moving into the late 1920s during the Great Depression, we can see how Frankenstein's monster as a metaphor relates to another time of crisis in U.S. history in relation to the criminal as a monster in law and science. In the late 1920s, James Whale, a famous filmmaker in Hollywood, drew upon the themes in Mary Shelley's novel, but with a contemporary twist, creating a new version of Frankenstein for the silver screen. In James Whale's film version of the novel, the monster has been granted a criminal brain. James Whale took special care in granting the monster human qualities as to evoke compassion from the viewers. His intention to evoke empathy from his viewers was in relation to the very important issue of the time called biological determinism or eugenics. Biological determinism was the belief that criminality was inherited and not a result of the surrounding social environment. Many people believed that in order to improve the human race, eugenics was necessary. Eugenics was a practice of sterilizing the weaker of the human race, those being the criminals, social misfits, the mentally retarded, and the mentally disturbed. This was a widespread practice in parts of the United States and was even taught in schools. It was a way of making the species stronger and taking the burden off the less fortunate of the hands of the government that was in the midst of a great financial crisis of the Great Depression. Frankenstein's monster is a metaphor from the time of its conception in the early 1900s encompasses many of humanity's political, econ economic, social, and scientific activities up until the present day. In the 1800s, the monster's concept was utilized throughout Europe and the United States as well. It was a popular subject in novels, plays, print cartoons, and is a highly effective tool in the political sphere. In the beginning of the 20th century, Frankenstein's monster, for monster transformed into the silver screen his message was communicated easily to the masses. His legacy lives on in science, legalities, and political tropes, biogenetics being one of the most popular. Virtually anything that bears resemblance to Mary Shelley's description in her final novel is subject to scrutiny. In Mary Shelley's last revision of her Gothic novel, she describes the monster as so, the living monument of presumption and rash ignorance which Frankenstein let loose upon the world, is a moral message that rings true this day although this lesson is perhaps not fully conceived.